Welcome to Easy Limo Learning Simplified. My name is Eric. I'll be taking you through this topic, natural numbers. And uh, for this lesson, we'll be looking at a rounding off of uh, numbers. And uh, we will start by looking at the meaning of rounding off. What does it mean when we talk about rounding off of numbers? Uh, number two, we will look at rounding off of numbers that are whole. That is whole numbers. Then number three, we will look at rounding off of decimal numbers. If you have a decimal number, how do you round off? And then, of course, at the end of the, the lesson, we'll be able to give you some assignment to help you with practicing and also to help you test on your understanding of the, of the concept as discussed during this session. So when we talk about rounding off, it uh, simply means are trying to find the closest value to a given number basically for purposes of making uh, the number simpler to read and also to interpret supposedly you just see the number just at a glance you should be able to tell what is the approximate value of that given number uh, this normally proves relevant and actually more important when we have very small numbers and also when we have quite large numbers you know when you have a number like for example 0 0.000, 000 you know, 1, 2, 4, 7, 9, 3, 4, 7, 6, 9, 1. You know, such a number here. You know, it would be uh, tedious to read through all that, you know. So you'd want to round it off to some approximate value, you know. What is the closest value to this number? Just at a glance, you'll be able to see. If you round it off, let's say to the nearest 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6. Uh, for example, maybe decimal places, you know, or the place value, you know. If you check the place value, this one is, you know, we, we've looked at place values uh, before. So if you have a problem with place value, possibly you can check from our previous videos, you'll be able to see how we get the place values of digits. So we have tens, hundreds, thousands, you know, ten thousands, hundred thousands, and then millions. So maybe you can round it off to the nearest millions, you know, just to help you uh, make the number simpler to read. And also just to interpret what is the approximate value. As compared to when you are, when you are to read the entire number, the entire number, all the digits that will be so tedious. Also, we have numbers like four, seven, two, four, seven, three, four, eight, nine, seven, two, four, nine, two, three, four. So, this is such a large number. So, you'd want to approximate this value to, to just to help you check or interpret what could be the closest value to this. That is basically why we are rounding. So, we try to find is this number closer to. Uh, 240 billion is it is it is it is it closest to to 240 million what is it closest to so that it is easier to interpret and also to read so we have our first example here we have uh, these numbers you want to see how do we round off how do we round off so we have the first Example, example number one. So you're supposed to round off the following numbers to the nearest 10. You see? So the nearest tens. 10 has been used here to mean place, place value. So to the nearest tens. Remember, we, we have looked at place values before. So if you have challenges with place values again, you can check from our previous videos. You'll be able to see what that is all about. So how do you go about it so first you identify the position you know when we're talking about place values of numbers we say these are just positions of numbers so you identify the position where exactly is this place uh tens you know place value tens where is it so when we're looking at place values maybe if i start with the first one when you're looking at the place values of whole numbers. Remember at the beginning of this lesson, I said we are going to look at how we round off numbers that are whole, like the ones you can see displayed on the screen. 
and then later on we'll be able to see how we round off numbers that are decimal. So when you're looking at place values of numbers that are whole, like what's the place value of a particular digit, you know, we said for whole numbers, the place values we begin to to state the place values. You know, we said place values are just positions. We begin to highlight the place values from the farthest end of the right, you know. So the last number here, you know, that is where we start from. And that becomes ones place value. So we started with one, and then we move to tens. So we start from the farthest end on the right as we move to the left hand side, you know. So ones, then you add one zero tens, then one hundred. This one you have looked at in our previous videos. You can check, you'll be able to see how we go about that. So for now, we are interested in the tens. So if the first one here, if this one, the last digit here is, is ones, then tens should be digit eight here. So that is what you check first, the position, you know, you're supposed to round off to the nearest tens. So after identifying the position, then you draw what you call a cutoff line immediately after the digit that is highlighted immediately after the, the digit that is highlighted. So this is this eight here is the one we are rounding off. That is the, the digit that is at tens position. So eight, eight is here. Eight is the digit at the tens position. So we have gotten the digit. And then what you do next is to draw a cutoff line immediately after that digit, you know. Then usually this digit eight here is the one that you're supposed to round off you know, the one that is highlighted. So it is the digit at the tens place value, the tens position. So this is what you are rounding off. So how do you do it? So as you round it off, normally it's supposed to increase by one. This only, the one you are rounding off. The rest like two, three, zero, and nine will definitely remain untouched. They will just remain Two, three, zero, nine. You know those ones before will not tamper with them. So this eight here, the one that is highlighted, is the one that will either change. You know, so it can change or it can remain the way it is, depending on certain condition. So I'm going to see what is the condition. So either it will increase by one or it will remain. So what will determine whether it is increasing by one? This digit highlighted here increasing by one or remaining the same is now the digit immediately after the cutoff line. So we look at the digit after the cutoff line here. So this digit could fall in two categories, you know, it has to meet either, either of the conditions. Either it will be in the lower, lower category or in the upper category. So we have digits ranging from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven eight nine these are the possible digits we have among the natural numbers so now a uh, lower category ends at four so this is lower category and this one here is upper category so lower category digits ranges from 12 and zero is part of it let me add zero down here. So we have this. So lower category digits ranges from zero, one, two, three, four. Then we have the upper category digits ranging from five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So if this digit after the cutoff line falls in the lower category, you know. Remember, I've mentioned the digits in the lower category, group 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. If it falls, if the digit after the cutoff line falls in the lower category, then nothing happens to the digit before. You know, we said the digit before, this digit 8 here, would either increase by 1 or remains. It could remain the way it is or it could increase by 1. So what determines whether it's increasing by 1 is the digit after. The digit after could be falling in the lower category. 
or in the upper category group. So if this digit falls in the lower category, nothing happens to the digit before. If the digit after falls in the upper category, so it could either be 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, like you see in this case, it does fall in the upper category. Then you increase the digit before the cutoff line by, by 1. So like in this, 7 here falls in the upper category. So that then qualifies us to increase the digit before the cutoff line by 1. So of course, we said the other ones will remain 2, 3, 0, 9. Then now 8, we add 1 here. So plus 1. And I've explained why we are adding 1. So it becomes 9. Now, something else now that we do is that once you have done the rounding off, you can see now I've increased the digit 8 here by 1. So it's 9. Usually, all the digits after the cutoff line, after you have rounded off, you reduce them to zeros. So we only have one digit in this case, which is 7. So 7 reduces to 0. So the number 230, 1987, when it's rounded off, it becomes 230,990. So you see the 87 there has been rounded up to 90. Just, you know, it is easier to read 90 as compared to 87. Remember, we are talking about reason for rounding off just to make numbers easier to interpret and also easier to, to read so reading 90 is easier compared to reading 87 you know so we have rounded it up because you see that number is closer to the number 87 here is closer to 90 you could not you could either round it down to 80 or to 90 so it's gone to 90 because it's closer to 90 compared to 80 you see that's another way of looking at it of course we've taken you through the process Okay, so let's look at the second one, number two. We see how we do it. So number two again, we'll do the same thing. So still tens. So this is ones and this is tens. So this digit here is the one we are rounding off. So you draw the cutoff line immediately after that and you look at the digit after the cutoff line. So the digit after the cutoff line, which is three, falls in the lower category. So nothing happens to six. So six remains. So this number is approximately equal to 3, 4, 5. So nothing happens to 6. So 6 remains the way it is because the digit after the cutoff line falls in the lower category. And of course now after rounding off, the, all the digits after the cutoff line reduces to, to 0, irrespective of how many there are. So that is what it is. If you move to the third one again, 10's position is 5. Draw the cutoff line immediately after. Check the digit after the cutoff line. So it is 5 that you are rounding off. So 5 will either increase by 1 or remain the way it is. So 6 here falls in the upper category. You can see the upper category group of numbers. So 5 here increases by 1. So this number is approximate. Remember I said all the other digits remain the way they are. So 3, 4. So the first 5 remains. The first 5 remains. And even the last... Out. So, so the, the 5 here is increased by 1 because this digit 6 falls in the upper category. So it becomes 6. And of course, after that, 6 here reduces to, to 0. Yes. So that is basically how you go about it. So 56 has been rounded up to 60. So let's see what happens when you have now decimal numbers. So the procedure is still the same. You still have to identify the, the position of the digit you are rounding off. Now, in this case, it's the, ne the nearest hundreds. So, hundreds, if you start with the first one here, you know, this is tens. Again, if you have trouble with identifying the place values, you, you, it's, it's part of what you have discussed in our previous videos. You can check and uh, you'll be able to, at least, that will be able to help you with an idea of how to, to identify the. The position of a digit, you know, the place values in short. So this is six here is tens, and then hundreds is digit five is in the position of hundreds. So immediately after this digit five, you draw the cutoff line. So hundreds digit is five there. Then after that, immediately after that, we draw the cutoff line. Then we look at the digit, you know, after the cutoff line. So remember our categories. So zero, one. 2, 3, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So remember we said this is lower category group and this is upper category group. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, those are lower category and 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 are upper category. So if a digit, if the digit after the cutoff line falls in the lower category group, nothing happens to the digit before. If the digit after the cutoff line falls in the upper category group, the digit before the cutoff line increases by 1. So like our digit after the cutoff line 4 falls in the lower category, so nothing happens to the digit before, so it remains. So that is going to be... So all the other digits will remain except those that are after the cutoff line. So these ones before will be 9, 8, 7. The decimal point will also remain. 6 and now 5 here will remain because the digit after the cutoff line falls in the lower category. And of course now after rounding off, remember all the digits after the cutoff line will always be reduced to zeros. So we have 0 and we have 0 there. So uh, one more thing, a, sl a, sl a slight difference, you know, this with the other digits, you know, other numbers that are whole. For decimals, usually the last zeros after the decimals, you know, these last zeros here, they don't count that much. This only happens for decimals. You can always ignore them. Yes. So you ignore them, you see. So the number is 987. 0.65. So elimination of the last zeros only happens when you have decimal numbers. Okay, so let's look at the last one here, number two. So number two again, hundreds, that is two. After the cutoff line, three here falls in the lower category. So this number will be approximately equal to four. Nine eight seven five point four two. The reason why this four two here has not changed is because of the digit after which is falling in the lower category. And then of course three four will reduce to zero zero, and you have said that last zeros they don't count that much. And finally number three you do the same thing. Five falls in the hundreds uh, place value draw the cutoff line. So you can see now after the cutoff line, 6 falls in the upper category. So 5 here will increase by 1. So this number is approximately equal to 3, 4, 5, 6, point 6, 6. So 5 here is increased by 1 because the digit after the cutoff line is in the upper category, you know. So you reduce this 6 here to 0, and then of course the last zeros when there is a decimal point will not count, so you can ignore them. So that is all about how we do the rounding off of numbers. We have uh, incorporated also decimals just to help you see what happens with decimals. Yes, I know we'll be looking at decimals later on, you know, but uh, just we've, we've incorporated it within this lesson just to help you check uh, what happens, how we do the rounding off when the numbers are not really whole. So we have also a few questions here to help you with uh, understanding. So do attempt and uh, you can always be posting your responses to the comment section. We'll be looking at them and giving feedback accordingly. Otherwise, that marks the end of the lesson. Goodbye.